The Air Zoo is full of terrific aircraft, a huge mural with all the colors and imagery, the rides, aircraft under restoration. It can be easy to overlook some things that seem at first, well, kind of simple or plain. Like this, a General Electric J31 turbojet engine. Originally designed as an I-16 by General Electric, which stood for 1,600 pounds of thrust, the J-31 was a further development of the British power jet's W-1 turbojet engine. That jet engine, designed by Frank Whittle, was first flown in an aircraft in May of 1941. This greatly interested the U.S. Army Air Force, and they arranged to get one of those engines and the drawings for it. Deemed the most capable company for developing jet engines at the time, General Electric developed the 1A, based off the improved power jet's W2B engine. The GE1A engine ran for the first time in 1942. It had just 1,250 pounds of thrust. Using the lessons learned from the process, General Electric continued to develop the engine. Eventually, the I-14, rated at 1,400 pounds of thrust, was developed, and following that, the I-16, rated at 1,600 pounds of thrust. The I-16 was renamed the J-31 by the United States Army Air Force, and production of the J-31 began in 1943. A mere 241 of these engines were built, yet it's important to note it was the first mass-produced jet engine built in the United States. Let's take a look at how it works. It uses a single stage, double-sided centrifugal flow compressor. Compressed air goes outwards into a diffuser and then is fed into the 10 combustion chambers. Fuel was fed in through here to each combustion chamber. The thrust created exits through a turbine wheel. This is what actually drives the compressor up front. These J31s were used in the P59A era comet, which never went into service, and the Ryan FR1 Fireball, a mixed engine fighter that saw very limited service. There's a great local story of a J-31 that Western Michigan University got in 1950 from the U.S. Navy for use in their aviation mechanics program. This came through the efforts of Herb Ellinger, an instructor in the program. And for many years, Herb was a volunteer here at the Air Zoo. There were no instructions, no manuals. It was missing the starter generator. So Herb and the students first made a mount for it and then they adapted a P-39 landing gear motor to use for the starter. An oil tank and lines were fitted. They used a 24 volt auxiliary power unit and battery from a Curtis C-46. And this would provide power for starting and ignition. A fuel tank with about 20 foot of hose with control switches mounted in a box were set up. And this kept the controls and the fuel well away from the engine. A tapered valve was used on the fuel tank to control the fuel flow and hence a way to control the engine speed. So the big day comes and Herb Ellinger is ready to fire the engine up. He begins by engaging the starter, slowly at first. Once it got to higher RPMs, Herb would then turn the fuel valve to get it running. Now as the RPMs begin to rise, the engine starts running on its own, but without Herb opening up the fuel valve. Uh-oh, something must be done quick as it's running faster and faster all on its own. So he bends the fuel hose into an S shape and squeezes it tight. And the J31 starts to spool down and he relaxes his grip a little bit and it revs up again right away. So this just won't do. So he keeps a tight grip now on that fuel line and he starves it of fuel until it is well and truly stopped. Turns out the primary fuel pump on the J31 was so strong, it pulled fuel right past the valve. So a more robust valve was found and would be installed. 
With a few more checks and double checks, they did successfully run the J31 under their control. However, the incident gets out to the local community and it shows up in both the student newspaper, the Western Herald and the Kalamazoo Gazette, all about this runaway jet engine that nearly takes flight on its own. So the story could end there. But see, here's the kicker. It's just a pretty simple looking engine. But this is the very same J31 that nearly got away all those years ago in 1950 up at the college. Yes, here we are 71 plus years later looking at that same engine. So the J31 turbojet engine, so humble looking, nothing flashy, but this is one dandy artifact here at the Air Zoo. Maybe you ought to make plans to come and see it in person. In the meantime, give us a follow. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.